people think of deserts as lifeless wastelands, dry, silent, and barren. But what if I told you that hidden beneath one of the largest and most unforgiving deserts in China, scientists discovered a massive underground river system that had been flowing unnoticed for thousands of years? This incredible find didn't just surprise researchers, it shocked them. Beneath the blistering sands of the Taklamakan Desert, a place so harsh it's nicknamed the Sea of Death, Chinese scientists found evidence of a lush, thriving ecosystem that once existed in what is now a sea of sand. The discovery isn't just a fascinating look into the ancient past. It could reshape what we know about climate change, ancient civilizations, and even the future of water access in one of the world's driest regions. <laughs> The Taklamakan Desert is located in the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region of China. It stretches over 330,000 square kilometers, making it one of the largest sandy deserts in the world. For centuries, it has been seen as one of the most dangerous and inhospitable places on Earth. Temperatures here often soar past 40 degrees Celsius, or 104 degrees Fahrenheit. There is almost no rainfall, no permanent rivers, and very little vegetation. Historically, traders on the Silk Road used to say, if you go in, you don't come out, referring to the deadly shifting sands of the Taklamakan. But it turns out this desert may not have always been so lifeless. In fact, it may have once been the heart of a green, thriving landscape, one that supported wildlife, vegetation, and even ancient human settlements. The discovery began not on the ground, but in space. In 2021, Chinese scientists analyzing satellite data noticed something unusual. They were using satellite imagery to search for underground water sources when they saw strange linear patterns beneath the desert surface. These weren't natural formations. They didn't match any known geological structure in the area. To the trained eye, they looked like the buried traces of a river something that hadn't existed in the region for thousands of years. To investigate further, the team used ground-penetrating radar and seismic sensors. When the results came in, they were stunned. Beneath nearly 35 meters of sand, there was a massive, ancient riverbed, intact, preserved, and completely forgotten by history. As the scientists dug deeper along the ancient riverbed, they weren't just documenting a forgotten waterway, they were uncovering signs of life. Real, organized, intelligent life. This wasn't just an untouched river system. This was a cradle of ancient civilization. Archaeologists working with the team began to discover shards of pottery that had once been part of bowls, storage containers, and ceremonial vessels. Some of them featured intricate patterns, designs that hint at culture, possibly even language or symbolism. Nearby, stone tools were found. These tools were shaped in a way that indicated not only functionality, but planning. There were blades for cutting, grinding stones for food preparation, and even what may have been rudimentary farming tools. Even more surprising were the fire pits, perfectly circular formations with layers of charcoal and ash preserved beneath the sands. These signs of combustion showed that people had gathered here regularly, perhaps seasonally, or even year-round. Together, this evidence suggests that the Lost River was not just a water source, it was a lifeline for a thriving society. Some scientists now believe that small towns or settlements may have existed along its banks. They may have used the river not only for drinking and farming, but for trade, ritual, and community gatherings. What's especially fascinating is how organized this society may have been. The layout of the discoveries suggests a pattern, possibly indicating that these weren't just scattered camps, but part of a broader system of habitation. Roads or trade routes may have once run alongside the river, connecting communities across the region. There is growing speculation that this ancient society may have been part of a larger, unknown civilization that existed in Western China long before written history began. A civilization that thrived when the land was green, before it was swallowed by sand. 
Some scholars are even comparing this discovery to ancient Mesopotamia and the Indus Valley, places where water gave birth to human advancement. Could this hidden Chinese river have played a similar role? These questions are now driving a new wave of archaeological research across the Taklamakan Desert. China may be sitting on a vast, unexplored history just waiting to be unearthed. The implications of this discovery go far beyond archaeology. In fact, they could reshape China's environmental, economic, and geopolitical future. First and foremost, there's the water itself. China is no stranger to water shortages, especially in the arid regions of Xinjiang and Inner Mongolia. As climate change accelerates, rivers across Asia are drying up, glaciers are retreating, and agriculture is under increasing stress. The underground river beneath the Taklamakan could provide a lifeline, not just historically, but right now. Some scientists estimate that this hidden aquifer could contain hundreds of millions of cubic meters of water. That's enough to support irrigation, livestock, and even human populations in areas currently considered too dry to inhabit. Already, engineers are studying the possibility of accessing this water using sustainable extraction methods. The idea is to drill carefully and monitor how much water can be used without disturbing the ancient layers or depleting the reserve entirely. But there's a serious risk. Unlike modern aquifers that are replenished by rainfall and snowmelt, this ancient river may be a fossil water source, meaning once it's gone, it's gone forever. Tapping into it carelessly could destroy an irreplaceable resource. Beyond water, the discovery has enormous strategic implications. Xinjiang, where the river is located, is a region of high political and economic sensitivity for China. It is central to China's Belt and Road Initiative, a massive infrastructure and trade project that aims to connect Asia with Europe and Africa. The ability to support larger populations and agriculture in this region could give China new leverage, not just internally, but globally. If sustainable farming becomes possible in these deserts, it could help reduce China's dependence on foreign food supplies and reinforce their long-term economic resilience. Environmental scientists are also considering a much more ambitious idea, regreening parts of the desert. If enough water can be used responsibly, China may attempt to plant drought-resistant crops or even restore portions of native vegetation. This wouldn't just support local communities, it could help fight desertification, lower regional temperatures, and create new carbon sinks. Of course, all of this is speculative. The project is still in its early stages, but the potential is undeniable. What began as a buried river has become a symbol of hope, transformation, and perhaps even redemption for a land that was once lost to time. While the discovery of the hidden river opens doors to new possibilities, it also delivers a powerful and sobering message. Thousands of years ago, the Taklamakan Desert was fertile and alive. Rivers flowed, people settled, nature thrived, but something changed. Whether it was a gradual shift in climate, the collapse of an ecosystem, or the exhaustion of natural resources, this land became uninhabitable, and it happened fast enough that entire societies may have vanished with it. This is not just a story about the past, it's a lesson for today. As we face global climate change, rising temperatures, and the growing scarcity of water and natural resources, the Buried River serves as a time capsule. It reminds us that environmental collapse is not a distant theory. It's a reality that has already happened before. It challenges us to ask, are we listening? Are we making the same mistakes? Are we prepared for what might come if we ignore the signs? But it also gives us something else, a chance, a chance to learn from the past, to use ancient wisdom and natural resources responsibly, and to shape a better future, not just for one country, but for the world. Because if a river can survive for 10,000 years beneath a sea of sand, then perhaps so can hope.